one final display to show you in this vicinity of the basement before we go uh, back into the room for the fourth and final time in this quote-unquote epic collection video. <laughs> I'm joking. Is this display of Hot Wheels main lines you're seeing here. And they are from 2007-2008 as indicated here. In the 2007 uh, All-Stars of the Thunderbolt here. And here, 2008 New Miles Custom uh, 77 Dodge Van. And so again, main lines from 2007-2008 Hot Wheels. And here you're just going to see all different makes and models. Again, a lot of American muscle, souped-up hot rods, bikes, trucks. Um, not too much foreign, but mostly just domestic. As you're seeing here, again, muscle cars and such. Hummers. Here's some nice Chevy trucks. Uh, un unfortunately, these two rows, because there's four rows of them here, these two rows starting down here with this third row, kind of an obstructed uh, cheap seats view. Unfortunately, the unflappable pole there kind of blocks me from getting a better view of this row that you're seeing here. These are kind of sharp. They're from a, a gold series. Again, just regulars, main lines, not chase cars or anything like that. And then coming over on this side, again, apologize for the obstructed view here. Of uh, the the last row of of main lines you're seeing there, some uh, Chevy Silverado trucks there, and some convertible Camaros there, I believe, some sharp ones actually. That takes us into the room in the corner of the basement for the fourth and final time in this video. You have no idea how happy I am to say that because that means that I'm almost finished filming my video and showing you guys everything that I had to show you in my collection. And for those who have been watching so far, uh, any or all parts of it, just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for your time. really means a lot to me. Please leave comments and I will respond to them. And again, thank you so much for watching my video so far. hope it hasn't been a disappointment and is almost finished. I'll be getting back to the room here and the die cast. Not a whole lot of die cast in this room. Quite honestly, this room's mostly the storehouse of the sports car collection, and then a lot of action figures in here, sports and, and otherwise, but not a whole lot of die cast. I do have Hot Wheels, Matchbox, some Johnny Lightning, and RC2, um, green light machines in this room, and then just some quote unquote other die cast from the non traditional brands. Also, I have some very unique die cast to show you in this room as well. Before I start the task of showing you the die cast in this room, just want to spend a couple minutes talking about my benefactors, my buddies, the guys who had a big hand in making this collection possible. For those who have been watching the video from the beginning, you know who they are because I've, I've talked about them quite a bit. It's Mo, Chad, Carm, JB, then my local buddies, Kenny and Jason. And then I just wanted to touch on this room that you're seeing and talk about this room a little did you know about the room itself. So we're getting back to my benefactors. Full disclosure, my viewing audience. The only one of them that actually knows about the making of this video is Carm. True. Yeah, I, I've kept the other guys in the dark. Just told them I was working on a project but didn't specify what. So really, they have no idea I'm doing this, except for Carm. They have no idea they're going to be plugged like this. And if this video goes viral, then... The, and But uh, Carm actually, though he knows about this video, doesn't know about the nicknames. He has no idea about Carol Baskin. Um, and speaking of which, Carm, congratulations on your selection and participation in Dancing with the Stars. I, I hope you win. <laughs> um, and as for Chad, good news, my viewing audience. Chad has fully recovered from his wrist injury, much to the, uh, the uh, ecstatic happiness, I'm sure, of, of Mrs. Chad, now that Chad will be fully functional around the home again. Um, and also, Chad, in very slick fashion, sent me a mystery box. Which, uh, again, since we're in disclosure mode, Chad sent it to me weeks or even months ago, and I still haven't opened it yet. Um, I, uh, Chad, I, again, you have my apology on, on, on this video here. I'm sorry for not opening your package. What I'm going to do, Chad, I'm going to open it before the conclusion of this video. I'm going to show it on video. I assure you that, sir. Uh, JB had a good conversation with him um, a few weeks back. He's doing great. And then the conver we just talked for a long time about a lot of different things. And then either his phone ran out of charge or he hung up on me. I, I don't know which. Uh, Mo, I haven't talked to in a, in a minute. And and Mo, you had me on video here saying um, I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out to you because Mo, I, I quite honestly, I miss our our nationwide bobblehead stadium exclusive uh, scam that we ran successfully for a number of years. And you know we didn't do it this summer because well let's let's be honest they, they weren't allowing fans in the stadiums this this baseball season so but i miss it buddy i do i do um and kenny and jason they're doing good um i probably don't see them enough and i should but um they they're doing good still collecting star wars as far as i know 
Um, so everybody's doing good. I just wanted to tell my viewing audience that. And, and, and just once again, thank my guys for all their contributions to my collection. I really can't thank them enough for, for all everything wonderful they've done for me. So thanks. And now for the did you know about the room itself. I uh, just want to share with my viewing audience uh, that this room that you're, that I've made into, I guess you would say a showroom of sorts, was actually a Y2K uh, emergency storeroom for the previous home's owner. Yeah, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Um, I bought this home in the year 2000. And I bought it off a gentleman named Frank, a senior citizen, uh, age-wise at the time. And he, when we were sitting, when I was seeing the house, he brought me down here and he had shelves like these shelves you see here, the shelving unit that you're seeing here that these cards, a box of cards are sitting on. My father and I put these shelves in, but Frank had his own shelves here when he was, when I was being shown the home because I was interested in purchasing it. And on, on these shelves though, weren't cards and action figures, but dry goods. And this whole room that you're seeing here was just shelves and rows and rows of dry goods because Frank was one of those people, for those who remember, um, it was called the Y2K scare. Scare might have been a little bit strong. Um, concern might have been more appropriate term for what it was back then. But there was a concern among a lot of Americans that, you know, once the calendar flipped over to January 1st, 2000, that somehow the computers would shut down. And so Frank kind of stocked up on dry goods or whatever he can get his hands on, I guess, and stored it down here in this room and you guys can see what I've converted the room into um, since then. So Frank, if you're seeing this video, um, if, if, if you're watching this video, Frank, here's your Y2K storeroom and what I've made it into since you sold the house to me 20 years ago. Back to showing you the collection with the die cast in this room, starting here at the entrance of the room and then just working around the room clockwise from the 12 o'clock position. Here on this display are some mainline Hot Wheels at the bottom there, and then some multi-packs up top from about the year 2004, 2005. And the main lines just run along the same lines, all my other main lines, a lot of bikes, trucks, American cars in there. There's a dairy delivery, as you can see. American muscle and such. Might even be some Kmart exclusive color cars in there. These ones in this uh, row over here are kind of nicer. Final run cars, the So Fast and the Ferrari, meaning Hot Wheels retires that model. So you won't see another catapult or, or so fast because that model is being retired to the final run. And up top here are some multi-packs. Here are three gift pack five packs with exclusive cars in them. These two are Mustang five packs. So with five exclusive Mustangs in there and that one, as well as this one, this is the Mustang 45th. And then over is a Super Chrome's uh, five pack. All five of these cars were offered in basic paint app colors, but then there was a Super Chrome which I thought was kind of sharp and caught my eye. And so, you know, I added it to my collection. And over here on the end is a Batman multi-pack from, from back in the day. Three exclusive Batman cars, including a Batmobile and a Joker car. And then a little Batman guide and clothes up top there. And then we move from there to this display. Not too much die cast to see here, just a, a few cars. Up top here is a Hot Wheels Premium Series Fire Department Rods car. Um, this is, again, it's a premium car, a little better tires and wheels there. And it highlights a fire department from Chicago, Illinois, a few different series of them. This is from series two. It's a Fiat 500C. And there was a number of different series of these issued. And they highlighted the fire departments from different cities across America. For example, in series two, there was the Chicago, then there was Albuquerque, New Mexico, Miami, Florida, and Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I have that one. And below that one is a Michael Jordan Matchbox uh, Chevy Tahoe two-pack. We might have touched on this when we showed you the Jordan action figures. Um, but this is an exclusive Matchbox Collectibles Chevy Tahoe two-pack. And again, all the licensing for Jordan Collectibles checks out here. We know from before, from seeing this car over here, the Radical Rides Jordan, that Mattel does have a Jordan license at this time. And we also know from Michael Jordan that he only advertises for Chevy Car Company. And so that's why it makes sense with the Chevy Tahoes there, an exclusive collectible uh, two-pack. Still on the top shelf of the display, but now in the lower left corner, here's a Chicago police car. And the law enforcement series of a cars made by this company called Motormax. And it's a 1 in 24 scale, so it's a larger car in this box. 
And I found this car about 15 years or so ago at a local KB uh, toy store in the shopping mall. And if you notice the, observe the box of this car, it's really in, in great shape. Four corner mint, no noticeable flaws in that packaging, nor in the window, no dents, dings, or scratches. And very tough to find cars from that long ago in this good a shape. And the reason why this box is in such good shape, a little story behind that is, it's not the original box of this car. When I found this car at the KB, again, roughly about 15 years or so ago, I wanted, I, I saw a bunch of cars on a bottom shelf, and they're from a law enforcement series. So there's about five or six different cities that have cars featured in the series. But I just wanted the one from Chicago, and I found it. I found it at the KB. The problem was the box itself was really beat up. It was like it was just in bad, poor shape. And I was like, oh, I want it for my collection, but not in a beat up box. And then I observed that this box you're seeing here, this dark blue box, this is Law Enforcement Series by Motormax with the decals and stuff on top. It's a, it's a generic box. I observed that all the law enforcement cars in the series had the same generic outer like shell box. Only the contents then were different. And so I got to thinking and I found a, a car from a different law enforcement agency. It might have been New Orleans or from a different state. Again, once again, I don't remember. And its box was mint. And so I went over to the, the clerk or the cashier, it was, it was a lady, and I asked her, can I do a box swap and just swap out this Chicago police car for this other car? Because this box is in better shape. And by the way, see the, the, the flap on the side here? You could just pull the flap out. It's not sealed or anything like that. So it makes it real easy to do a box swap then. You just swap out contents. And the, the barcode on the bottom of the package is going to be the same because it's a generic box for all cars in the series. So I explained this all to her. And she agreed and let me do it. And so I did a box swap and that's why this really nice box is on this Chicago police car because she let me do the box swap. So thank you, ma'am, whomever you might have been for letting me do that for the car. But that's the reason why it's in such good shape. And um, yeah, and I, and I found this one for my collection and I picked it up. Moving on to the middle lower shelf, we have this trifecta of sorts. It's a Johnny Lightning two-pack you see in the box there. And above it is a Land Rover from Matchbox and a 187 scale Ferrari from Hot Wheels. And we'll start down here with the Johnny Lightning 2-pack. This is a 1 in 25 scale 1953 Chevy Impala model that you see a picture of there in green. And when I say model, I, I'm not quite sure if it's a like a snap tight model or a more traditional model that you would use glue and paint on. I'm not sure which kind of model it is, but it's a put together model of this, again, 53 Chevy Impala in that box there. And also it comes packaged down here with a one in 64 scale Chevy Impala. And you can see there, it's got the white body and it even says, well, it's kind of hard to see there, white lightning on the tires, making it the white lightning chase. And this little sticker you see up in the corner, the super value 998 sticker. For those who recognize it, then you know where I got it from. I got it from KB is where I found it. And above the, the Johnny Lightning is the Land Rover and the Ferrari. These came to my collection from Carmine. And once again, Carmine, putting your, your wares on display here in my collection. Uh, again, Carmine and I have been trading and, and, and sending each other stuff for almost 10 years now. And these two cars came in one of the early boxes that Carm sent me. So I would say roughly about 10 years ago. And they were just random cars Carm threw into the box, a care package for me from some cars he was going to send me from my collection. Just like here, there's two random cars, take them. And here when I come now, and, and these were sent to me again 10 years ago. Now I come down here 10 years later, and I kind of revisit these two cars, this Land Rover from Matchbox, and this Ferrari, it's the Challenger F430 from Hot Wheels, and the 187 smaller scale. And 10 years later, wow, how these cars have really surged in popularity and value in their respective lines. Um, when Carm sent them to me, again, 10 years ago or so, they were just kind of like another car in the line. They really weren't too special, I would say. But over the course of the past five, six years, both these have surged in value. With the Land Rovers and the Matchbox line, I don't know if it's because only Matchbox does Land Rovers that makes them particularly valuable and so after. And with Ferrari, for those who know are in the know who collect diecasts, then you're aware that all Ferraris in the Hot Wheels line have surged in value over the course of the past five or six years. Because it was about five or six years ago that Mattel and Hot Wheels ended their deal with Ferrari, with the Ferrari company, and no longer can feature Ferraris in their line, making all the existing Ferraris particularly valuable. And there's a really sharp red one there you see. Apologize for the glare. So 
Karm, I guess that makes you look like a genius. Unless you knew some 10 years ago. I don't know. But once again, Karm, I can't thank you enough for it, buddy. Thank you so much. One final die cast I'm going to show you on the top shelf here is a relic from my childhood. It's a Lowenbrow beer truck, about 1 in 50 scale. And I don't know why this ever ha had a place in my collection. I remember owning this uh, as a kid. It was on my desk in my bedroom when I was a kid. Um, but I don't know why it's a Lowenbrow or a beer truck or what connection there is there. Just another relic from my childhood that survived because my mom didn't throw it out. That takes us down to this display. Here's a Hot Wheels 3-pack, a uh, Batman 3-pack. It's a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive from 2008, as I got this at the Mattel booth when I was in San Diego that year at the convention. And it's a 3-pack of three uh, Batman vehicles. They're 1 in 50 scale, so they're a bit larger. It's the Batgirl Cycle, the classic Batmobile, and the Bat Cycle. Again, 1 in 50 scale in this exclusive 3-pack that I obtained at the convention back in 2008. It moves us to the 6 o'clock position in the room, and the die cast that's on display here at the top of this uh, board. And it's just uh, regular cars from Greenlight Machines. Classic muscle you'll see there, Mustangs. One in green, one in orange from the Speed series. And then you'll see more classic American muscle here from the Auction Block series. Shelby GT. Mustang, Cuda. Again, they're all regular cars. Not chase cars or anything like that, but just cool ones that I wanted to pick up from my collection that caught my eye at the retail stores back in the day. And then below those are three cars from the Foos, from Chip Foos, the, the legendary designer. These are made by a company called Full Throttle. And again, just picked up these three cars back in the day that caught my eye at the retail stores, mostly because they're just sharp. Here's a 52 GMC truck with a flat gray finish. Nice packaging there. These two, I remember, were considered the chase cars from the line. The Foos Grand Master in Chrome, as you can see there. And the 56 Chevy Nomad with the unpainted Zamek finish. Yeah, these two cars right here were considered the chase cars from the line. So I picked them up for the collection. They are very sharp. And here's one on the end from Matchbox Collectibles. And again, this is from the mid-2000s. Picked this up back in, oh, I don't know, 2005 or 2006. It's from the Saturday Night Live uh, TV show. You'd see there with the, it's marked year 1976. And it's the, the donuts delivery truck from one of John Belushi's skits where essentially he's just kind of mocking the Wheaties. And you see the donuts there. The Wheaties commercials and the skit is what he's mocking, I suppose. And there's a delivery truck that you would have saw in that episode of Saturday Night Live. So like a car culture car that Matchbox Collectibles did from back in the day. Still in the 6 o'clock position, but moving down to the table. Here are a couple of very famous and recognizable General Lee cars that I have in my collection from the TV show Dukes of Hazard. Here's a 1 in 64 scale uh, model of the General Lee from Johnny Lightning. Probably picked this up oh, well over 10 years ago. Very sharp car. Can't say I care for the plastic wheels. And below that is a 1 in 24 scale beauty of the General Lee made by Joyride Studios there in box. And more on this piece in just a second. Going back to touching back on Dixon Hazard and why they're so popular in today's modern diecast. I mentioned this before when I showed you the White Lightning stock car that I have in my collection of Dukes of Hazard. But the reason why they're so popular today is because, number one, only Johnny Lightning did Dukes of Hazard cars, again, back in the day, not anymore. Uh, none, of the other, uh, none of the other diecast manufacturers had done Dukes of Hazard. And so, therefore, it makes these cars scarcer because Johnny Lightning only did Dukes of Hazard years ago and never revisited the line. Never produced anything recently with the General Lee. And I suspect that's because, you know, the name General Lee and the image of the Confederate rebel flag is not considered to be politically correct and widely accepted in, in our modern times. Not trying to get political here, people. This is just a, a video about my collection, but I'm just, you know, offering speculation as to why none of the manufacturers have bothered to touch this line and why Johnny Lightning never bothered to go back to it. And then more on this car right here. The 1 in 24 scale is just a beauty. And it was gifted in my collection by a former boss of mine from my GameStop days named Eric. Eric was my boss probably 15 years ago at GameStop. A great guy. He's still my friend today. We still talk every once in a while. And uh, he was a big Star Wars collector when he was my manager back then. 
Maybe not as crazy as, as Kenny and Jason are with Star Wars, but he was hardcore. And he had mentioned he was looking for a certain figure by the name of Dirge. Very hard to find figure. And I had it in my collection. And for Christmas that year, I gifted it to Eric. Here, man, take it for your collection. And I think he was really touched by the gesture. And so anyway, Eric liked to go on vacation to the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. And one year he went on vacation. When he returned, he, he returns with this in hand and he gifts it to me. This beauty, this 1 in 24 scale General Lee Charger. And not only is it a beauty, but check it out here, guys. It's autographed by the actor Rick Hurst, who played Cletus, Deputy Cletus Hogg on the TV show. I don't remember exactly how Eric obtained this car, if he actually met Cletus himself at a signing session or he found it in some memorabilia shop down, you know, when he was in his uh, travels down on vacation. But nevertheless, he gifted it to me for my collection. And, and what a wonderful gift. And, and I'm really glad I had the opportunity to, to show this and to thank Eric for just this wonderful gift he got me probably 15 years ago that sits in my collection today. And just some more random die casts we're going to see on the tabletop here. Uh, before I show it to you, I just want to correct an error I had I'd made and something I misspoke. Currently, we're at the 3 o'clock position here in the, in the room, not the 6 o'clock position. But trust me, I tell you guys that pretty soon we're going to be at the 9 o'clock position because like I had said before, there's not a lot of die casts to see here in the room. Anyway, getting back to it, here are three uh, relics that survived my childhood in the form of matchbox cars from the early to mid-80s. There's an orange Corvette, convertible BMW, and a Quasar concept car. Again, my never threw them out, so they just survived to this day in my collection. Over here on the table sits a loose 1 in 64 scale uh, flat racer formula car. And this was more GameStop swag, so thank you GameStop for that. This car was a promo giveaway car, and you can see there on the side the turbo graphic from when the Pixar video game Turbo came out. And it was meant to be given away as a, as a promotional item for anybody who pre-ordered the game. It's kind of a neat car. It's got rubber tires. And I asked the folks at GameStop when I saw it in the drawer if I could take it from my collection. They said yes. So for the umpteen time, thank you again, GameStop, for providing me with this swag. Moving to this side on the table here. It's a 124 scale NHRA drag race car from John Force, made by Winter Circle. I don't have very much at all NHRA drag cars in my collection, but this one caught my eye because it has the King of the Hill decals and, 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 and tampos on there. You guys wouldn't know what a big fan of the show I am. There you can see the King of the Hill uh, show logo and Bobby Hill. And here in the front, you can see Hank Hill and then Peggy down here and Boomhauer. And so once again, the King of the Hill stuff caught my eye. That's why I bought this car from my collection. Big fan of the show. Continuing along the wall now, we're going to see some main lines from Hot Wheels from about the years, oh, I don't know, 2008, 2009, starting up top here. Just all different makes and models. You see a Hummer there, some muscle cars. I think those are Olds 442s and Nomad. Just other cars that caught my eye in the line that I picked up from my collection. Now, you can see here on this Firebird Funny Car, the Goodyear uh, decal on the tire there, that meant it was a Walmart exclusive. Limited quantities of that car only came through Walmart with the Goodyear uh, tampo on the tire there. And down here you can see on this bone shaker, same thing, the Goodyear tampo there on the tire, indicating Walmart exclusive. I forgot to show these postcards when I was showing the sports stuff in here. These are provided by CARM. CARM has a connection to the Canadian Post Office, and these are very sharp postcards here. You can see this is Johnny Bauer. Uh, Leafs great goaltender and on the back side you've got Gump Worsley over here is Maurice Richard still in the, in the factory seal Steve Eiserman over here with Sidney Crosby on the back side and that's a very sharp Toronto Maple Leafs uh, jersey with the raised leaf on there so once again thank you Connor for these sharp items below the table that I just showed you the die cast on kind of wedged in between the basketball card display and the two Joker figures I have some multi-packs of die cast. This is a Camaro Legends Johnny Lightning multi-pack you're seeing there, as well as a General Motors muscle. And below that's a big time 5 deep multi-pack from Jetta. What I'm going to do is pull these uh, boxes out and take them out into the basement and show them to you because the lighting down here is poor and the accessibility down here is poor to see them. So it's just easier if I take these out and show them to you where it's much better lighting and much better accessibility. So here are those multi-packs that I brought out of the room to show you because the lighting out here is a lot better. These are two 10-packs 
from Johnny Lightning. This one on the left is the Camaro Legends 10 pack. It's 10 uh, different Camaros in there, and I apologize for the glare, but I think it's kind of inevitable, as well as the checklist in the middle there. And you see it's different uh, Camaros from all different years, 67, 68, 69, 70, 2001, 2002. And they're all regular cars, no chase cars in there, but just very sharp, very sharp Camaros. And you guys know what a big fan of Camaro I am. And then over here is a General Motors uh, muscle pack. Same thing, 10 cars, all exclusive, I believe, to this 10 pack, as well as the Camaros we had just seen with a checklist in the middle. And this one's actually Chase because, as you can see here, this 67 Chevy Nova from the pack, if you can see the reflection there, it has a white bottom and it has a white interior, making it a white lightning. So that makes this uh, 10 pack a white lightning Chase because of the Nova. And this is a Jetta 5D Big Time Muscle with five exclusive cars in there. Um, a Chevy Corvette Stingray, a 69 Chevy Camaro you're seeing in there. Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, GTO, and Mach 1. Just five sharp American muscle cars in there. And again, caught my eye, so I picked it up back in the day. And we're back in the room now in the far wall in roughly the 7 o'clock position. We're going to see some more assorted die casts right here. And starting up in the corner here with this one, it's a Dodge Charger from Fast and the Furious. It's Dom's Charger. And it's 1 in 64 scale, made by a company called Ravel, who are mostly known for making model cars, but they made this 1 in 64 replica, which is pretty nice from back in the day. And here are some car tuners, hot tuners series from Hot Wheels. They are slightly in larger cars, and they're kind of cartoonish looking. Here's a couple of Catacle Escalades, one in red with the Alpine logo, then one in white. You see it from the Hot Tuners series, a couple more here, Escalades in gray and in black. Here's a chrome Honda Civic. That was considered a chase car from this series. You can see there says one of 15,000. And then down here are a couple of Hummers, one in red, one in black from the same uh, Hot Tuner series. I'm going to finish off the Asura diecast down in this area. Here is a model ice rink resurfacer, otherwise known as a Zamboni. A little plastic replica of it there. As it says, you can see snow tank and lid open to simulate snow dumping. If you were so inclined to take it out of the package and play with it, but I prefer just to keep it in the package like all my other cars. And below that is a Matchbox little yellow fire truck. It's from the 50th birthday series where Matchbox did one car from each state. And this is the International Fire Pumper from Illinois. As you can see there, it's got the little Illinois replica license plate. And down below over here is a Hot Wheels 2-pack. It's a Lara Croft Tomb Raider 2-pack, which has the Jeep. And the motorcycle. And again, back in the day, Hot Wheels did a bunch of little two packs like these from different films. I know it was a Batman one and a few others. And I kind of, you know, the Jeep and the motorcycle kind of caught my eye, so I picked them up from my collection. Down here in the, on the floor are a couple of Johnny Lightning Megabuy two packs. And as you can see there, it says Megabuy, compare at 598. So these two cars packaged together. Uh, they're telling you with this with this designation that normally they would ring up at three dollars each for a total of six dollars, but if you bought these two cars in this Mega Buy two pack, I think it'd ring up at four dollars for both, which I actually thought it was kind of a good price at six dollars, but I'll take it for four. And as you can see there, it's got a '72 Pontiac Grand Prix, kind of a sharp car, dark colored with tinted windows, which caught my eye. And then also this one over here from the Anniversary Series, the Speed Racer. And I apologize for the shadows. I'm trying to work around the shadows here. But that's from the Anniversary Series. So these two cars definitely caught my eye. And for, again, I think it was $4 back in the day for both in the Mega Buy Pack. I, I picked it up from my collection. And below, same thing. Here's a Mega Buy 2-Pack, which is a uh, kind of a dark olive-colored Hummer. And next to that's a red Mini Cooper. I like the Hummers back in the day. I really did. I, when I see them out there, I pick them up for my collection. And so, I, you know, I thought I, I wanted to get this one. So I picked up these two Johnny Lightning Mega Buy 2-packs. That takes us up over here to this Matchbox car. And speaking of Hummers, here's another uh, Hummer from Matchbox. And this is from the Super Fast series. It's the Hummer H2 SUV concept, as you can see there. And, you know, Matchbox did a whole series of, of, uh, of Super Fast. And we're going to see more of those in just a second.
Now it takes us to the nine o'clock position on the fictional clock in the room here. See, I told you guys it wouldn't be long at all until we got to the nine o'clock position. I promise you that. And here are more of the Matchbox super fast cars that we had just seen the Hummer. And these are the ones I picked up from my collection. And once again, with the Matchbox super fast cars, again, these are back in the day, 2005, maybe. Everything down in the basement, as I mentioned, is pre-2009. There's a limited edition, one of uh, 15,500. And all the cars in this set are numbered in the corner in that set. And they're just nicer cars that Matchbox produce, more adult collectible cars. Again, I'm more of a hard top guy, but I bought this convertible 57 uh, Ford Thunderbird for my collection. It caught my eye. Below that's a couple nice Camaros. There's a 69 Camaro in green and a 70 Camaro in orange. There's a really sharp Boss Mustang in blue in the Super Fast series. 57 Chevy Bel Air in pink. Uh, Mercury Cougar in white. Here's a really nice London Taxi, as you can see there, with the white wall tires. And below that is a Volkswagen Beetle Taxi in yellow. And then up here, here are some main lines from Hot Wheels back from the year 2001. I don't have very many 2001 cars in my collection at all, because like I mentioned before, I didn't really start collecting the die-cast hardcore until 2003. And I think with these cars, these main lines from 2001, and there's, a nice, there's a nice 56 Ford, the Harley Davidson decals on there, and a shoebox, and there's a bus. I think these were just hanging around on the retail pegs at a Kmart or a Walmart or a Target. You know, so many different stores to, to frequent back then. That I just, you know, they caught my eye. They were in mint condition. There's a purple passion. And so I picked them up for my collection. And again, I only have uh, maybe 10 or 20 cars from 2001. There's another yellow fire truck that we had just seen from Matchbox, a fire eater. Yeah, so again, just kind of left over in the retail stores, and I just picked them up from my collection from 2001, even though, again, I wasn't collecting until 2003, and I probably didn't actually find these until about 2002 or 2003 at the retail stores. And it moves us down here. Here is a 1 in 50 scale 66 TV series Batmobile car from the Hot Wheels. Uh, Hot Wheels did a whole line of different vehicles from the Batmobile, from the Batman films. There was a different Batmobile, some other different Batman films, Bat Cycle. We had seen something very similar to that over here in the three pack previously, in that convention exclusive one. And so, more or less, it's just more of that. And again, I, I kind of like that. The six, it's just classic looking from the classic TV show. And so, you know, picked it up for the collection. A few more die casts to show you down here at the floor level. This is a OCC American Chopper fire bike that you're seeing there. It was around this time in the late 2000s, uh, maybe 2006 or 7 or 8, that the TV show Orange County Choppers became very popular on the Discovery Channel. And so Joyride, you can see there, made a series of bikes or motorcycles from the show. And this is actually a gold chrome limited edition, as you can see, finish there. Uh, the bikes that were in gold were considered the chase bikes. And again, there's this show with the, the dad and the son. I think his name was Paul and his son. They used to bicker on the show all the time and fight and argue. And then I think eventually, if I remember, the son left the show and just kind of did his own thing and got his own garage going. But anyway, this one caught my eye because it was, you know, gold chrome chase bike. And so I picked it up. Speaking of gold, here is a Johnny Lightning Gold Series uh, 60, uh, 68 Chevy Corvette. Very sharp looking car there, gold paint, gold wheels, even says there, uh, brush gold uh, finish, and it's limited edition, one of 5,000. Believe it or not, though, it's not a chase car. It is not considered a chase car from the series. It's a regular car from the series, but a very sharp regular car. And again, you guys have been watching this video long enough, haha, <laughs> very funny. You know that I don't just buy chase cars from my collection. I buy all kinds of cars, regular cars, chase cars, you know, exclusives, really anything I catch in my eye. I just look at that baby. That, that thing caught my eye, definitely. So that's why I picked it up. Over here from the same series, the gold series, a, a, a 67 Pontiac Firebird. It doesn't have the gold treatment, but still a very sharp car. And if you look at the packaging on it, it's a more premium package with this little tape on the sides there. And just a nicer car. Again, limited edition, one of 5,000. Just a nicer car from Johnny Lightning. They did a whole series of these. And again, these, these two cars here uh, caught my eye from this series. And so I picked them up.
That moves us now to the 11 o'clock position on the dial. And as you can see here, frame of reference, here's the entrance to the room where we started. And these final diecast displays I'm going to show you before we bid farewell to the room, to Frank's old Y2K storage room. Well, we're going to see a lot of uh, Hot Wheels main lines here that you're seeing, as well as some Maisto, some Jada diecast, green light machines, Johnny Lightning. And in particular here with these Hot Wheels, which I'm going to show you in just a minute, these were some of the earlier main lines I acquired back when I first started collecting. And like any collection, it starts off by just buying one or two or three, and that becomes six or seven, and that becomes 10 and 20 and 100. And then 20 years later, you got a whole house full of this stuff. We'll begin with the Hot Wheels main lines up top here. There are uh, four uh, remaining cars from 2001, as you can see there. We talked about those previously, an Evil Twin. There's a go-kart and a Scorch and Scooter. And then moving down below, here's a whole display of main lines that are mostly from 2003 that you're seeing here, and maybe even some from 2004. And once again, as I mentioned, it was the first year I really got heavy into collecting. So I was out there buying them at the retail stores that you're seeing there. American Muscle, trucks, buses, motorcycles, uh, the different Batmobiles uh, that you're seeing there. On the end here, some boom boxes. In different colors and just again a wide variety of different main lines again primarily from 2003 and maybe even some from 2004 and might even be a couple like over here i think these are actually from 2002 these uh these main lines you're seeing here from 2002 because notice how the packaging changes with these boom boxes 2003 first editions versus over here the highway hauler um, from 2002 i believe but then over here, I have these two cars, this uh, this Overboard 454 and this one over here, which is a, a muscle tone. And I have them in individual holders, plastic holders. Reason being is I think they were like some kind of special issue, maybe hard to find cars. If you notice here, the collector number 014, that denotes what number this car is in the mainline series. And if you notice on this 454, it's blacked out there as well as over here on the muscle tone. There is no number. So I think those are like rare issued cars, and that's why I put them in these individual holders and put them up top here. And then over here in the center are some uh, Pro Rods from Maisto. There's a nice little spiffy pink 69 Corvette Coupe. And just some other cars I picked up, a Camaro and a Nomad from the Maisto Pro Rod series. And we see some more Gold Series cars here from Johnny Lightning. We'd seen previously. There's a really nice uh, Mustang there, the 2x2 two two Fastback. And over here is a Shelby GT. Sorry for the glare. Again, just better, better premium cars, nicer package. Not chase cars, but just nice sharp cars that I want that I wanted to pick up. So I picked them up for the collection. 